All right, howdy. 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 <laughs> okay, uh, we are doing the Aggie Park development. We are team three. So a little introduction about the project. We did a quadruple net value analysis on our site of Aggie Park, which is located in between Colvis Parking Garage, the Association of Former Students, Kyle Field, and the Quadrangle, which is home to Texas A&M's Corps Cadets. So to back up a little bit, a QMV analysis is an analysis that combines the triple bottom line of sustainable development, and that is economic, environmental, and social sustainability, and then it adds a sensory value to it. Um, so it talks about the appeal of sight, sound, touch, taste, and smell. So I'm going to introduce my lovely team here. Um, we have social and cultural, which is Kaylee, and then economic is done by Louise, environmental with James, and sensory is Kyle, and I'm the team leader. My name is Mariam. So the current state of um, Aggie Park is definitely used socially and culturally, but we don't think it's used to its full um, value of what it could be. So it is used for tailgating right now. Um, it can be a little bit dangerous, uneven sidewalks, some random patches of sand, um, and it's not super accessible. Rangers Burial Ground is present, um, but there isn't much social, cultural engagement or um, year-round activity. Uh, there's supposed to be a bullet point out there, but I'm not sure what happened there. Uh, but in its current state right now, there's really not much economic value to it. Um, you could argue that on game days, you would have a lot of traffic in MSC. But other than that, um, there's a cost to maintain it, and other than that, there's really not much uh, economic value to its current state. Oh, there it is. <laughs> so, <laughs> currently 90% of the park is uh, currently green space. Um, rather poor green space, especially by the parking garage. A lot of it is sand, uh, quite patchy. There's erosion on the sidewalks. Uh, the current drainage situation on the storm drain going all the way down uh, to uh, George Bush is also patchy in some places, could use some repair. Uh, right now there are about 200 different plants on site, mostly oaks and uh, shaded trees. Um, it's on the bus route, however, there currently is no stop on the park itself. Um, and then, with the exception of ring day, football games, the park is mainly just used for joggers and core fitness. So just like we've all focused on, the, uh, the overall quality of the green space is just not properly maintained. The only time it really is maintained is during the season. And uh, that means just kind of mowed more often. But uh, just there's a lot of same spots that just are tough to look at or eyesore. Uh, the bridge is one of the one of the decent scenic parts of the Aggie Park, and uh, but it also just brings your attention to the to the terrace, and the water is not really under it most of the year. Uh, there's little to no flowering areas, like outside of the former students and away from Caulfield. It's a part of the park. There's no like anything, any sort of flower gardens that look nice. And uh, yeah, the two most busy parts of the year, game days and ring day, and it just doesn't complement them or supplement them whatsoever. Whenever they need, to, it, it could, it's a nice place to take pictures. There's just so much potential for those two, uh, those two events. So in conclusion, uh, it has a lot of positive elements in this area. However, we think that there could be a vast amount of improvement that could add a lot of value to this area and to Texas A&M's campus. So now we're going to talk a little bit more about what we envision. So social and cultural. We think that um, Midway had an amazing quote in their presentation and creating a treasure for Aggies of all generations. So we want to incorporate the two-year-old children of Aggies and then the old Ags that have you know, graduated in the 60s, 50s even. Um, we want Aggie Park to be a place where every student of all ages and the residents of Bryan College Station can come together and really interact in a safe environment. Um, so we want to make sure it's safe for everyone. So we want to make sure we add lights throughout the park, um, and then security cameras. We know that there's going to be more people um, after this is developed, and so we want to make sure that it is a safe environment for everyone. We'll also include life preservers. We will have um, a water feature. 
So we want to make sure that the kiddos, if they fall in, they will be saved. Um, ADA accessible throughout. We want to make sure everyone is um, available to use the entire park. And then on our lake, um, our water feature, if someone were to fall in, the closest part to the pathways will only be 18 inches. So we're trying to make sure everyone's safe, and if they do fall in, then they won't. And so one of our aspects is the um, Special Events Pavilion, which we're really excited about. We think that it will not only house university functions, but it can also be used as a venue for possible wedding and receptions. And then it will be used for both private and public. So we think that the bottom will be more of public use with restrooms and things, especially for game days. And then there will be availability to rent out space for events and such. Um, the structure itself will be about one to two stories. And we're thinking about an outdoor patio to outlook everything. We're also going to incorporate a metered pathway for runners and joggers, so they'll be able to know how far they've gone, and um, throughout there will be lights, and um, we're thinking every 200 meters we'll probably put um, a meter there, to, and it'll also be very um, well lit with the blue light phone stations as well, so that safety aspect. And then our amphitheater. So we think that students as well as um, the residents of Bryan College Station will really be able to utilize this space for plays. Um, we also think that Bryan ISD as well as Col College Station ISD can use this for their students. And it's just going to be a really great place for everyone to come together. Um, they can watch plays, listen to live music, and um, just be with each other. Last but certainly not least, we have the activity lawns. So this is going to be where all the tailgating will happen. Um, we know that tailgating is a really big part of Aggie, Aggie traditions and we think that not only will it be used for tailgating, but it can be used all year round. Um, we think that also it can be used for student organizations for when they have tryouts, anything like that, they can come and rent this space for free of charge. And we really liked this quote, a campus's public open spaces should be like outdoor public rooms. They should be usable, comprehensible, and occupiable. They should be spaces that one can know and love. And then now I'm going to let Luis talk about the economic value. So overall, um, what the Envision Economic Value is enhancing the quality of life, uh, not just for students but visitors. And we feel that our usable features to Aggie Park are components of revenue generators. And I took this line here from a fantastic book. I'm not sure if you guys have read it, but I highly recommend it. Um, but what it says is that as Gerald Hines has long used high quality architecture and landscape design to maximize marketing opportunities, um, we feel that the features that we at Aggie Park will be able to market it uh, very well uh, to our revenue generator components. Um, so here I included this photo to kind of go, which I'll go over in a little bit more detail in each section here. Um, but this is most of the site. I think there's a little bit of cut off here at the bottom. Um, but if you can go to the next slide, please. Um, so of course, first and foremost, economic development. Of, it'll obviously create jobs to bring the project to life and to maintain it. It'll attract people, uh, residents and visitors, with, which will frequent nearby retailers. Uh, the new park will gain visitors from attraction and activity, not just for tailgating. Um, we were also looking at the food truck component, which will boast, boost local businesses. Uh, there's the overall site. Um, looking now, looking at the pavilion and the amphi amphitheater space, um, we feel that the pavilion is an opportunity to rent out the space. It can be rented out for exercise events or even company events. Uh, we would have a section for premium VIP tailgating uh, for a fee. Um, we have another section that's first come first serve, but we feel some folks would want um, their designated section for the entire football season. Um, open for any other organized events. And then uh, renting partial or whole space will depend on the final design of the pavilion. Uh, the amphitheater can serve for musical acts. 
Um, we feel it'd be a great addition on game days to have a live band out there, um, but of course can be used throughout the year. Um, and then as well for exercise and special events. Uh, and there's the pavilion, and I believe the next slide is, yeah, maybe theater. Next, please. Uh, we have another opportunity um, for a lot of the uh, uh, naming rights for the bridge, the lake, uh, the pavilion, the amphitheater, monuments, including bricks in one of the walkways that we have, um, which I think we'll touch on a little bit later. Uh, but we feel that with so many features that we're going to add to Aggie Park, there is a, an opportunity to uh, sponsor it. Um, so going over all those, um, we're not just designating names as we go through this proposal. Um, let's see here. So of course, as I mentioned earlier, um, we have the bridge, the pavilion, the lake, the amphitheater, and there's a walkway, which we'll be touch on a little bit later for the bricks for your uh, sponsorship. Uh, for maintenance, the landscape is, is designed to reduce the maintenance. Um, we would also have our lake circulating water. Um, so as you can see at the lower pond, uh, our lower lake to the upper lake, and then through the fountains would recycle the water, um, preserve and improve softscape, and also we would do gravel base uh, for seating, which would reduce our lawn maintenance. And then I'll hand it off to James. So the majority of our proposal was derived from midways as well as groups two, three, five, and six of uh, the Masters of Landscape Architecture students. Uh, we wanted to keep the park green, sustainable, native to Texas, um, and uh, took ideas from Texas A&M AgriLife as well as the uh, campus master plan. And uh, we ended up with 55 to 65 percent green space that could also be utilized for tailgating. Um, a major discovery was uh, for sustainability was last year Anna was given the Silver Bicycle Frontier Award by the University League of American Bicyclists, which basically means the uh, university is very bike friendly. There's a lot of bike racks for storage. There's a lot of uh, paths wide enough to accommodate bicycles. Um, but we are just shy of meeting that gold mark, which only has about 13 universities across the U.S. Um, so with this proposal, we hope to increase either gold or platinum by adding um, all the way around the uh, smallest width of the path is 8 feet, with the largest being anywhere from 12 to 15 uh, towards the lower section by the alumni center. And uh, during uh, tailgating times on uh, and the uh, covered seating areas right here and right here, uh, we're proposing to include um, some other midway uh, electrical outlets and um, cable connections for uh, tailgating cable. So, our main feature is also the biggest feature, which is the uh, two-tier lake. Uh, the lower section is about 12 feet below the upper section. Um, and it also serves the main detention area, meeting the uh, current stormwater ordinance of Chapter 7 and 12 for College Station, which is about 12 and a half acre feet. Um, leading from the upper section of the lake to the lower section is uh, steps that incorporate a rain garden. The rain garden is essentially going to filter the stormwater runoff that flows into the upper section of the lake that then gets pushed over the edge into the lower section. Uh, with the rain garden plants, um, we're going to add quarry boulders. The idea of the quarry boulders is to essentially uh, mitigate the erosion of the steps as well as um, more, more or less control the amount of flow that happens depending on how uh, heavy the rainfall is. Uh, the plants chosen for the rain garden were based on, again, a and AgriLife recommendations to serve both uh, an environmental and an aesthetic appeal. Um, the main choice of flowers for this were the uh, red spider lily, the red and white uh, Texas star hibiscus, as well as the rain lily. And uh, the upper leg is going to be stocked uh, with anywhere from trout to maybe catfish, depending on how a and feel about that. Um, in a way, it gave no specifics on fish, but a and AgriLife recommended um, largemouth uh, bass, as well as catfish and perch. Uh, for the pavilion, um, a 
main energy uh, sustainability design tool that we wanted to incorporate were solar panels. Uh, based on analysis that was done within Revit as well as uh, Solar Pro, um, Aggie Park in that area will get about 1,692 hours of sunlight each year. And depending on the amount of panels installed, um, as well as uh, the type of panel, because solar panels can vary extremely in reliability, as much as 46.2 metric tons of carbon can be reduced each year. Uh, and savings of these solar panels over a 20-year can range from 48000 roughly to $165,000 over 20 years, but they can break even, again, depending on whether they're bought, leased, or uh, acquired through loans. They can break even anywhere as soon as 7 to 10 years. Uh, for plants, um, we propose uh, rainwater tanks to be used as an alternative source of irrigation and uh, gray water for the pavilion. Uh, based on a calculator provided on a spreadsheet by AM AgriLife, it's uh, estimated that any savings can be seen from 10% to 84% uh, above estimated uh, current costs. But this is a very rough estimate as uh, the size of the tank, the material of the tank, the location of the tank, whether it's above ground or underground, even the connections and what's used for all take a huge uh, aspect of the more exact total cost. Uh, so in accordance with uh, the Midway proposal, the campus master plan, basically all the trees are intended to be kept and then relocated. Uh, and then for the relocation, it's advised to uh, develop a silt fence around the more high maintenance areas of Aggie Park, so mainly along uh, the perimeters and especially along the uh, parking garage side where the landscape just makes it uh, mainly sand. Um, and uh, with the new uh, addition of plants, which again is going to roughly be anywhere from 135 to 200 more plants, it's going to mainly consist of uh, local plants. So Southern Magnolia, uh, Magnolias, Live Oaks, uh, Texas Red Oaks, and then the mentioned flowering gardens before the rain garden, so the Texas Hibiscus and uh, Red Spire Lily and uh, Rain Lily. And with that, I'll give it to uh, Kyle for sensory. So as for the sensory value of uh, Aggie Park, we're well, to start with the uh, mainly water reserve that will provide lakefront, uh, just furnished for the uh, tailgate experience, and just the only lakefront area or lake area besides the campus golf course to be on campus. Um, Obviously, there'll be space for public art and uh, and photo opportunities like we learned from uh, our guest speaker the other day. I'm quite like posting on Instagram, having the opportunity to post is something fun for the, for them. Uh, the scenic alley of trees that lead to the leads to the field on game day, obviously one of the, one of the nice scenic uh, items in this in this uh, rendering. Um, obviously, we'll keep up with the, with the green space better if that means like putting turf down or preventative way to protect the grass year round. I think that's the main reason why the grass gets destroyed and becomes an eyesore. And uh, in the planted bed lake landscape that we'll see better in the next rendering. Over there on that side, whatever, whenever the, uh, the lakes change elevation. So with the, with the trees, mature, relocated, and newly planted trees, uh, we're trying to go for an environment, like a nature -y green environment that a um, like few of those like study years or just people that want to just be in an open open space. Um, for the taste, like a, like we said earlier, the food truck will be uh, will be on on the park, but uh, hopefully the renovated area will cause more trucks to see an opportunity to like to join. And for sound and touch, the amphitheater, the amphitheater should be available for students and obviously including uh, live performances like for games or anything anything special, but just having people that have skills to play using and having a platform for people for people to play on, on campus. Uh, the running water fountains that will be a nice uh, peaceful environment also for studying with the two located on the on the lakes. Um, the the monuments and uh, and dedications would be an open opportunity for donors to leave their mark on it if they're interested whenever whenever they, any sort of alum that have an opportunity to like invest or like have a way of like leaving their mark on Aggie Park. 
And then obviously with and then with the trees it should provide just I don't know it's not like physically touching but the shade and the and the water should provide just a cooling feeling in the in the hot summer. It's a nice area for you have. Okay, so we just gave you our four parts of the quadruple net value analysis. And now we're gonna show you this video that we created that kind of helps sum everything up.
uh, based off of our QNB analysis, we believe that improvements to the environmental, social, cultural, economic, and sensory aspects of Aggie Park will be a true sense of place that will draw visitors and students. So the features will offer will activate a space for many different uses and purposes, as opposed to the park just offering a space for tailgating. Thank you. Okay. Any questions for the team? Did uh, one of you guys, or did somebody have a drum? Yeah. Yeah, all right. That was awesome. Yeah. That was awesome. <laughs> That's <all right. laughs> Were those y'all's own renderings? Did you sketch like the little head? Uh, both. Okay. And AutoCAD. Okay. Photoshop. Any other questions? Okay, well, you clearly did a power of work in terms of getting that done, so congratulations.